Do you ever feel like you're missing in your life love for others? Maybe joy in your circumstances, maybe some peace or patience with your kids, faithfulness, goodness, gentleness, or self-control? Or maybe you just aren't kind with some people around you. Any of those things that we talk about in the Bible that are fruit of the Spirit, you go, sometimes I've got one or two or three of them, but sort of like the construction project we got behind us. You can see I've got my work shirt on. Uh, my kid gave me this a few years ago, not your problem, but we're building a wall for Mother's Day for a photo booth here at Pure Heart. Because we love you mothers, you are a big part of kids becoming who they are. So thank you for everything you do. And that includes all of you foster and adoptive moms. So all of those fruits of the spirit, what if we can figure out how we can really have those in our life, like the Bible promises, and walk that out? That would be an amazing thing, and that's what we're going to be dealing with in our service today. Also, we're going to be doing communion. So make sure you grab those communion elements from your house. If you have some bread or juice, where you can put together, because God knows our heart. But really, it's about our heart attitude and reflecting and walking through. God, where do you want me to be from where I have been? Welcome to church.
Have you ever known someone who was super smart, super talented, but they just lacked character? I mean, they could do anything, but you couldn't trust them with anything. We see this all the time. Great leaders who can lead others, but they can't lead themselves. Athletes, singers, artists, talent just dripping off of them, but stories of their broken lives just keep dripping out into public. Now, if we're honest, it's not just those who are in the public eye. We all struggle with doing something we know that we shouldn't do. All of us have an area or 50 in our lives. We want to see change, parts of our character that we know need to grow. So how do we, as followers of Jesus, experience personal transformation of our character? The Apostle Paul tells us in Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 26. And we're going to anchor here for this entire message today. Galatians 5, 16 through 26. Here we go. So I say... Let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. I think we all can relate to this today. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. When you follow the de desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Watch this list. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger. See a lot of that today. Selfish ambition, dissension, division. See a lot of that today. Envy, drunkenness, wild parties. And Paul just adds this. And other sins like these. Like, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Let me tell you again, as I have before, Paul says, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's intense. But, here's our hope, the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and our favorite, self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful natures to the cross and have crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. And I love this last part. Let us not become conceited. Cannot wait to get to that part today. So, online campus, thank you for joining us today around the world, around the country, around the state of Arizona. Crossroads Recovery, guys, we love you. We know you're going to be encouraged with this message today. Tell Pastor Todd I said hi. Welcome back to the Indiana Jones set. Or for the ladies watching today, to our anthropology store. All right, let's get after this. We're going to look at three insights in regards to Holy Spirit's transformation and the fruit of the Spirit. If you're new to your Bible and you're like, what's the fruit of the Spirit? You're going to find out today, and I believe it's going to encourage you today. But before it encourages you, there's going to be a little bit of conviction. I'm just going to tell you right up front, this is going to smart a little bit. This is going to be difficult to swallow at first, but let's get after it. We're going to talk about three things. The need, the source, and the evidence. The need, source, and evidence of the Holy Spirit's power in our life and the fruit of His Spirit in our life. So let's start with the need. What does Paul mean, back to verse 18 of Galatians 5, what does Paul mean when he says, but when you are directed by the Spirit? He means when we allow, when we ask the Holy Spirit, this is prayer, when we ask the Holy Spirit to empower, to lead us, then the fruit of the Spirit will be growing and showing in our lives. But remember this, I just understand this today. Fruit on a tree, on a fruit tree, always starts off incredibly small. We can't expect people to give their lives to Jesus, be filled with the Holy Spirit, and then instantly, boom, all these virtues are just flowing from their life because growth is a process. We are all in process. If you're watching this today with somebody, just smile at them and go, it's true, you're in process. It takes time. Now, here's a warning, and this is tough, but please hear this today. If the fruit of the Spirit love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. If this is not growing in us, we honestly need to examine our own hearts. And we have to ask this question, and I know this is going to sound intense, but go with this for a second. Am I really following Jesus? Have I truly given my life to him? Is he the leader of my life? And am I allowing his spirit to enter into my spirit in a way to truly change my life? Am I lining my life up with what God wants 
for my life. Because here's the deal. You can't say, I love Jesus, yes I do, if there's no fruit on you. You just can't do it. Now let's quickly unpack the fruit of the Spirit. First of all, we have love. This is so good. Love. We all, we all know this. Love. Serving people for their needs, not our needs. Um, we don't easily give up on people or show favoritism to people. We treat all people with respect. I had the honor uh, for National Day of Prayer to pray with Governor Hobbs. I prayed when I was in, in her office, there was about 12 of us together, I prayed that she would know. This is my prayer for her. I said, I said, Lord, I pray that Governor Hobbs will know that not only does her position matter, but that she matters. That God, that she will know deep in her heart that you're, she is your creation. I wanted her to know that. That you love her, Lord. And that even though there's times around this table that we might disagree with each other, may not always agree with Governor Hobbs' position on things, and there, there are several things I don't always agree with, that we still love her. And then that afternoon, she signed a bill to repeal an abortion act that was really important to me and my biblical worldview and important to a lot of you as Jesus followers. Um, what's happening with abortion in our country is heartbreaking. Um, life begins in the womb, and we won't get on to that. I'll, I'm going to talk more about that this fall. But I thought to myself as I was leaving the office that day and later on saw that on the news, I've been praying with the Arizona governors for the last 13 years as a pastor. And it's not right for me to just pray with governors that I agree with politically. I need to pray for all of the leaders that are in authority because God calls me. His word calls me to pray for those who are in authority. That's what love does. Love doesn't pick and choose who we're going to love. Now, next, joy. This is so good. Joy. To delight in God for who he is, not just in what he gives. Joy is deeper than happiness. Because happiness is dependent on circumstances or happenings. Joy is not dependent on circumstances, but it's dependent on God who can bring me through any circumstance that life throws my way. Let's keep rolling. Peace. Peace is this. Peace is, this is anchored in trusting God. Growing in the peace of God means I'm growing in trusting God. It's just that simple. How's peace rolling through your soul these days? Next, patience. Oh, we all love this one, don't we? The ability to suffer and be wronged without losing our minds, without getting angry and blowing up and becoming bitter. How are we doing with that? Let's keep going. Let's put kindness and goodness together. Kindness is being nice, and being nice still matters. I know it's not much of a valued virtue in today's world. Even in the church, it's not a valued virtue anymore. Somehow it's become a sign of weakness to be kind to people, especially people that we don't agree with. Uh, goodness involves integrity. It's being the same no matter what group we are with, the same in private as we are in public. How about faithfulness? Let's move on to the next one, faithfulness. Faithfulness is being faithful. Um, it's reliability. It's courage, it's boldness, it's not being flaky, it's honoring your word, doing what you said you would do, it's standing strong when everybody else around you is running away. And the older I get, the more I value the fruit of faithfulness in the lives of people around me. I value faithfulness more than ever before. And it's not just about faithfulness in marriage. I value faithfulness in friendship, faithfulness in ministry. I value this because there's such a lack of faithfulness in our world today. Let's look at the next one, gentleness. I love this one. This is anchored in humility. It's not being focused on my rights, but on the rights of others. It's thinking before we speak. I said it's anchored in humility. And humility isn't thinking less of yourself. Oh, I'm just worthless. No, that's not, what, that's not what humility is. That's condemnation. It's thinking of ourselves less. And thinking about others more. And caring about their lives. And being gentle with one another. Lastly, and this is a fun one, self-control. <laughs> You're like, well, let's not talk about that. Self-control. And this is a heart to own your own stuff. No excuses. No blaming other people. Uh, if they did, then I would. If they didn't, I could have. Are we having fun yet? I know it's brutal, isn't it? When we think through this, we're like, am I loving? Am I kind? Am I patient? Am I faithful? Am I, am I gentle? Man, I'm blowing up all the time. I'm getting upset all the time. And this can be super convicting today. But smile, because it's going to get a little worse before it gets really, really good at the end today. Let me show you how this can be more challenging than you think. We see these nine, these nine virtues, these nine values. But understand this, when we look at this list, some of us say, well, I'm pretty good at three of those, but I'm struggling with the other six. But here's what you have to understand. The word fruit here, fruit of the Spirit, is singular. It's not fruits of the Spirit. You say, well, why does that matter? It matters. 
And you say, well, how's that possible? It's possible because look at a diamond. When you look at a diamond, a diamond has many facets, but you wouldn't see each facet of a diamond as a separate diamond. All right, if you struggle with that, a Reese's peanut butter cup. Okay, that's, that's where I live, all right? Reese's peanut butter cup. The chocolate and peanut butter have to go together. You wouldn't have a Reese's peanut butter cup without both together. You don't separate them out. Otherwise, that's just chocolate and peanut butter. Okay, let's just let's keep on moving. What Paul's saying is this. The fruit of the Spirit has these nine facets, but they supernaturally come together to make a brilliant diamond reflecting the light of Jesus in our lives. Here's what you got to know. The Holy Spirit wants us to grow in all all facets of the fruit of the Spirit. It's like saying, I'm really mature at being kind, but I'm really immature at joy. Well, then we're still immature. And here's the hard truth that we need to own today. If all facets of the fruit aren't growing in our life, we need to examine our heart and ask, am I truly being led by the Spirit? Because maybe, here's the deal, we're relying on our natural abilities versus the Holy Spirit's power to fully transform our character. If you drifted off, you have to come back right now. You have to lean into this right now. Listen to me. I'm naturally kind, and I'm not saying that boastfully. I'm, Stephens can be just nice people. As a matter of fact, I, I just have that natural gift. I, I, I have a strong gift of mercy. I'm just naturally, my personality is bent that way towards kindness and gentleness. That's just the way that God has wired me. But I'm not naturally peaceful. All right? Because I naturally worry. It's kind of a family bent, a family generational issue of dealing with worry. So I have this personality of kindness, but I don't I wrestle with being peaceful. I'm not saying this to bring condemnation to you. I'm saying this to you to awaken us to our need for Holy Spirit. As if the character of our soul depends on him and it does. Cuz here's what you have to understand. If we look at these as separate fruits of the spirit, in multiple fruits, in our natural abilities, in our natural strength, we can go, well, I'm growing in that, I'm growing in that. But to grow in all of them absolutely requires the Holy Spirit's power. And that's what I want you to see today, not self-reliance. And that's where we're going to next. So the next insight is this, the source. We talked about the need. None of us can do this in our own power. We're all in agreement on that, right? To grow in all these nine facets at one time, not possible in the natural. But with God, all things are possible. So He's our source. Let's talk about the source for a moment. Watch this in verse 24. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires, that's heart motive, of their sinful nature to his cross. I don't want you to miss this today. Paul goes on and he says this in verse 19 through 21. Because we ask ourselves, well, what are these, these passions and these desires? Paul told us in verse 19 through 21. He said this, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and again, and other sins like these. Now he shows us something that's absolutely vital. This is key today. Verse 16 and verse 18. Paul writes, So I say, let. That's a decision. That's a choice that each one of us has to make moment by moment of every day. Allow, let the Holy Spirit, not your strength, not your ability, not your natural giftings, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. But when you are directed, verse 18, by the Spirit, watch this, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. What does it mean to be under obligation? There's a heartbeat behind this. To be under the law means we live our lives in fear of God not loving me, that I need to obey him so that somehow I can get God to like me, to have his favor poured out on me, to get in his good graces. Paul's like, you can't earn your salvation. Jesus did that for you on the cross. Stop trying to do this in your own strength. Stop living under the obligation of fulfilling the law perfectly and start trusting the Holy Spirit to do in you what you can't do for yourself more passionately. Paul saying, nailed to the cross are, watch this, self-centered need to earn our salvation in our own strength. To get God to love me by doing good in my own power and my own ability. See, we need to crucify our self-reliant attitude. I know for some of you, you may be struggling a little bit with this, but I really want to bring this home. Let's call this our 
SOS. All right, I'm saying this on purpose. Those of you who are old like me, you know, you think of the police song. I'm sending out an SOS. When we live our lives under the self-operating system, when we try to do life in our own strength, the desire to take the good things we want to accomplish and become self-reliant to make that happen can destroy our lives. Let me show you how. Take our kids, for example. Those of us who are raising kids, it's Mother's Day weekend, let's talk about our kids. We want our kids to be healthy. We want them to be mature. We want them to be successful. And when we make it our goal to make this happen personally, like I'm gonna be a great dad, I'm gonna make sure this happens, I'm gonna discipline, I'm gonna correct, I'm gonna guide them. If all's going well, we're happy. But if they're not doing well and they're messing up their life and jacking up their life, we feel guilty and we feel like failures as parents. There's nothing more personal to us than when our kids mess up. Matter of fact, for me as a pastor, I can confront people on almost anything in life. But if I confront them on their kids, oh, they lose their minds. And so do I sometimes. See, what's worse is we'll crush our kids under the pressure we put on ourselves to be perfect. We'll overwhelm them to be perfect. We don't want them to mess up. And so we'll be overbearing and pushy and controlling. All right. It's Mother's Day. I'm going to back off a little bit, all right? And here's the other thing. Our kids will crush us as well because every problem they have, we think is our fault. Now, what God is saying to what Paul's writing to us, what the Holy Spirit wants us to know is we need to bring our fears and our sorrow and our need to control, our need to fix all of our issues, to fix our kids, to fix people around us, to change the world around us and do it all in our own strength. And we need to bring all of that in our own power and nail it to the cross. Let me say it this way. Our sinful nature doesn't just make us do bad things. It also makes us want to do good things in our own power. I have to tell you that again. Our sinful nature, our pride, doesn't just make us do bad things. The shadow side of this, what I want us to get today, is it also makes us want to do the good things in our own power. And that's pride. Watch what Paul says in verse 25 through 26. This is so good. Catch this. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. And here it is. You ready? Let us not become conceited, prideful. And Paul's saying, bring the pride of self-reliance, the self-operating system of your life, and nail it to the cross. And say, Jesus, I need your Spirit to change me I receive your price you paid for me that I could not pay for myself, and I surrender my life to you. See, we grow in the fruit of the Spirit when we humbly acknowledge our need for Holy Spirit to be our source of transformation. That's the truth. And here's a little test. You want to know if we're doing this or not doing this? Don't necessarily look at your life and am I really maturing the way I want to. Ask yourself this simple question. Am I praying more about the areas of my life I want to see changed? Or am I worrying and striving more? What are you doing? I know when I look at my life and the areas I want to change and ask myself this question, especially in the area of being in shape and being healthy, huh, am I spending more time watching videos, just working out, stressing and striving? Or am I bringing my issues with food? That's why I talked about Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Am I, am I bringing my issues to comfort myself with food? Am I bringing that to the Holy Spirit and asking Him to empower me and to heal me and to comfort me? Or am I striving in my own strength? to force myself into some kind of dieting rhythm, to deny myself more and more so I can get to the shape I want to be in. What are you wrestling with? Are you praying about it more? Then you're striving with it. Now, personally, my family right now, um, we're going through a lot. My mom was diagnosed with ALS. Um, she was misdiagnosed with Parkinson's and some other things. Um, so we didn't find out till very late in the stages where her whole left side of her body is now not very functional. It's heartbreaking for me to watch this amazing woman of God who's helped hundreds and hundreds of people suffer the way that she's suffering right now. Our little girls that we have adopted are struggling big time with some of their eating disorder stuff. Olivia and, and Ava are in therapy every single week. It's exhausting sometimes for my wife, Nicole. She goes from doctor visit to doctor visit to doctor visit. Um, Ava now has to have a thickening agent in her formula because 
If she doesn't, some of the formula goes into her lungs and she aspirates it. And so she's always, she's had a rattle in her lungs now for about six months of her life. And she's only eight months old. In the midst of all this, the church is booming and we're growing and so many people are coming to know Jesus and there's an ex- this huge announcement that I get to make this fall about a very exciting thing that's coming in our future and all this stuff is happening, the good, the bad, the ugly, all these exciting things are happening and my, our son Luke is about to get married this ne- in January and we're celebrating that and there's just so many good things happening in our lives and at the same time, these really difficult things are coming along at the same time and these, these two universes of pain and beauty are traveling together. And honestly, I've been wrestling with peace. I've been wrestling with peace. I've been having moments of anxiety and and being overwhelmed at times and just being extra real with you. This is the way we lead at Pure Heart. We lead by being vulnerable. We lead by being honest. Because I think if you honor God's word, the honor of God rests upon you. And so it's good to confess. It's good to be honest. But I just keep pushing through. And I have sensed this last week, the Holy Spirit said to me, you have to pull away, Dan. You have to find more time to get alone with me and let me refresh you and let me, the Holy Spirit told me, my closest friend who dwells within me has told me over and over and over again, you have to spend time with me. You have to let me be your strength in the midst of everything that you're facing. But to keep it real, there's this part of me as a leader, it's like I gotta pull myself up by my bootstraps. I just gotta keep pressing on and keep moving on. And it's not a healthy place to be. And Paul says, if you want to grow in the fruit, you want that peace to shine in your life, Dan, then bring your self-reliance and nail it to the cross. And bring it to me. And let me be your source. Let me fill you because you need me. And so do you. Those of you guys at Crossroads, you know this. You are not going to overcome that addiction in your own strength. You need God to do what only he can do to empower your lives. That's why you're watching today. That's why you're connected with us. And everyone watching around the world, right here on our Pure Heart campus, you know this. In our own strength, nothing. With him, all things are possible. So we need him. He's our source. Now, let's look again at verse 24. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to the cross. This word belong, It's actually a covenant word. It's covenant language. It means to put our trust in Jesus and now we enter into his family. We belong to him. He will not let us go. We belong. He will not disown us based on our performance. Well, fruit inspection time and you're not measuring up, Dan. No, Jesus is saying, I love you. Trust my spirit to transform your life. Stop trying to do life in your own power. I know that when our kids, Josh and Amanda and Abigail and Luke, when they come to me and want to talk to me and want to process life, It's one of the greatest honors of my life as a father to have our kids want to talk about life. I never say to them, oh, you messed up, you jacked up your life right there. I can't help you or talk with you. You messed up too much. No, the fact they're coming to me blesses me more than their mistakes frustrate me. The fact that they're coming to me blesses me more than the mistakes frustrate me. My daughter, Abby, a while back, opened up to me about a very personal area of her life. And I was heartbroken for what she was walking through but I was so proud of her willingness to come to me and then to ask me to pray with her and ask the Holy Spirit to empower her in this area of her life where she desperately wanted to grow. I felt so blessed as a dad to have my daughter process life and pain with me. And if I feel that way as a flawed earthly father, can you imagine how much more our perfect heavenly father feels about us when we bring our stuff to him and say, I can't do this in my own strength. I need you by your spirit to strengthen me. So, need, source. Let's talk about the evidence. Let me, let me lift your head up for just a moment today. Let me encourage your heart today. Third and final point. Pay close attention to what Paul says in verse 17. Galatians 5 verse 17. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. Now watch this. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. Here's the good news. How do we know that we belong to Christ? How do we know that we're filled with the Holy Spirit? Because I know it was probably scary for some of you to hear earlier, if we're not growing in the fruit of the Spirit, you may not be following Jesus, and we still need to examine our hearts. We still need to ask. And maybe we're not being Spirit-led. You still need to examine your heart. But listen, here Paul tells us that the evidence of being Spirit-led is the deep desire to do the opposite of what our sinful nature desires. To do good, to grow. 
I had, I had a young person come to me recently and ask me, they go, they had read the verse in the New Testament talked about where Jesus mentioned blaspheming of the Holy Spirit. That is a sin that cannot be forgiven. And they were a little bit, they were, they were concerned, they were afraid, like, how do I know if I've blasphemed the Holy Spirit? And I looked at them and I said, here's one thing I know for sure. If the Holy Spirit wasn't living within you, you would have cared less about that verse. As a matter of fact, you wouldn't be worried at all. And the fact that you're concerned is actual proof that the Holy Spirit dwells in you and is alive and active in your spirit. And it's the same thing when it goes with, with sin, when it goes to with dealing with this fruit of the Spirit. The fact that we have a desire, if today you felt any conviction, if today you were just like, man, I know I need to grow in this area, that is actually a sign that the Holy Spirit is alive and well in your life. See, the greatest evidence that we're Holy Spirit-led and growing in the fruit isn't how great the fruit is growing, it's how great our desire is for Holy Spirit to empower us and to grow the fruit in our lives. So stop beating yourself up today and be grateful that sin bothers you. Be grateful that you have this desire to grow because that desire comes from the Spirit of God living inside of you. So don't let the enemy kick your butt today. Be grateful, be happy, rejoice in the fact that you want to grow. Now, before we end today, there's two things we wanna do. One is, I wanna give you an opportunity to make the biggest decision of your life. For those of you out there going, man, I need God's power. I need the power to overcome these things. All this starts in a relationship with Jesus. When we come to Jesus and say, I wanna receive and accept what you did for me on the cross. You laid down your life for me. And then the power to rise again from the dead, I wanna receive that power into my life. When we say, Jesus, I wanna follow you and accept your forgiveness for my sin, we are then given by Jesus, the very person of the Holy Spirit to dwell within us. And so for some of you today, for the first time, others of you, Maybe today's not a first time decision. Maybe today's a more of a rededication of your life to Christ. This is the biggest decision you'll ever make in your life, to come home to the love and the power of Jesus. So if that's you today and you're ready to make that decision, pray this in your heart with me right now. He is listening to you. Pray this, Lord Jesus, in this moment, I commit my life to follow you. I trust you with my life. Jesus, forgive me of my sin. I receive right now your forgiveness. Thank you for loving me and never giving up on me. Now ask him this, Jesus, fill me with your very presence. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with your power, with your love and your joy and your peace and your patience and your kindness. Fill me up, Lord, with your power. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. And then finally today, we're gonna receive communion together. I know Pastor Matt told you in the beginning that we would take communion, so hopefully you have your elements available. You've got some type of bread and you've got some juice and you're ready to go. And here's how I want us to approach communion today. I want us to take a minute and, and thank Jesus for what he's done for us on the cross. That he paid the price for our sin and then had the power by the Spirit to rise again from the dead. And that same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead has been sent to dwell inside of each and every one of us who follow Jesus. Let's just take a moment and thank him for that today. So, Lord Jesus, we thank you for this bread. We thank you for what it represents, your body that was broken for us. Thank you for paying that price. Thank you for taking all the broken pieces of my life and making me whole again. I receive this now remembering your great strength. And Jesus, I thank you for your blood that was poured out on the cross that not only washed away my sin, but washed away my shame in a deep way in my soul, a place I could never get to in my own strength. So I thank you for the price you paid for me, Lord, and I remember the price right now. Pray you have a strong week. Can't wait to see you next weekend as we wrap up this series talking about the power of the Holy Spirit and His gifts He wants to pour into our lives. See you next weekend. Pure Heart, thank you so much for joining us today on our online campus. And hey, if you made a decision today for Christ, we want to walk alongside you. So would you go ahead and go to pureheart.org forward slash hand raised. We have some next steps for you that we would love to share. And we're just praying that throughout this week, God would continue to reveal his fruits of the spirit that are truly a gift onto us. We just had the amazing opportunity to go to Harold W. Smith um, Elementary School. Um, and we got to come and be on their campus for career days. So come check this out.
Hey, Pure Heart family, it's me, Principal Tara Burnaby, here at Harold W. Smith Elementary School in Glendale, Arizona. Today is our career day, and boy, you all blew us away again with your awesome volunteers being here today to present about themselves and their careers so that our students here at Smith can make hope something concrete. We teach our students here to think about their future, but what does that even mean if students cannot see a concrete example of what they may be able to do with their future. So having you here today has made the biggest difference for our kids, for our staff. Without you, we wouldn't have been able to bring this opportunity to our kids, and we love being able to rely on you. Thank you so much for your ministry and blessing us. And listen, we know that Mother's Day can look different for every single family. And so whether you're celebrating today, there's somebody that you lost in your life that you're missing or you're walking through infertility, we just want you to know that we are walking alongside you. We love you guys. We just wanna say a quick prayer for all of our moms, all of those who have lost and all of those who are wishing to be a parent one day. Father God, we just thank you for the impact and the role of motherhood. Um, Lord, we thank you that it is a gift, um, but we also know that for some individuals, they might not have that role. They may not have that mother that's present in their lives. But Lord, we know that there's not a single hole that you cannot fill, or there's no void in our heart that you are not sufficient for. And so Lord, we just pray for all of those who are missing their moms today, who maybe have moms in heaven, or maybe just don't have the best relationships with their moms. Lord, would you bring them peace and comfort today? And for all of those women who are waiting on your timing, who are walking through an infertility journey, Lord, would you just give them so much peace and so much love and joy and all of the fruits of your spirit, Lord, to continue to be steadfast and faithful to you. We love you, Jesus. It's in your name that we pray. Amen.